All right, man. Come on. Let's back this thing in here and see if we can't get it on the first try. Am I going to have to pull up? Uh, the way that trailer shoot. It's tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. We got it now. We're going to back it on in here. We're going to kick back, relax, and catch another episode of the Trucker's Table. Let's get it started. Uh, 
get a little bit newer trailer, maybe. Damn, 690, man. That's got to be like 2010, 2011. I guarantee you that trailer's over 10 years old. I want to go back and get the 698 because on that, uh, over there when you sign in to pick up the load of water, it asks you the uh, manufacturer date. And uh, that one's so old, the corner, I don't know if y'all can see it, but the corner, look at the corner of that trailer I just backed past, that Landstar, if you look right up there in the top, uh, top corner, it's uh, burned out. There's like a burned in hole right there where the uh, somebody's exhaust is fine. They poured it for so long, they finally burned a hole through it. So, yeah, here we go. This one looks newer. 698 is probably 2015, 2016, maybe somewhere in there. Not so bad. We'll get this one. 698802. shut on this trailer so we get up there instead of just driving right on out and leaving which I probably could do because <laughs> I don't think they had the little thing down I don't want to make them mad <laughs> so I'll stop let them check the back make sure it's empty and all that stuff you know because I don't want to make them mad because I got three more of these loads to do Woo. I get on the naughty list that'll make it a lot harder on me you know? so uh yeah, we'll play nice. <laughs> All right. Play it down to the edge. So I got it on the right set. I think I got it on one by. Let's move it back. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's much more fun. I guarantee. All right. Yeah, see, they got that thing. Up. They don't even have one here. So we'll, uh, we'll stop and let them uh, check our paperwork. Let them check, make sure the back is empty. Woo, don't take that gate off, Triple T. You need that gate. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this real quick. We'll be right back. We got an air leak too, we got to get fixed uh, pretty soon. So uh, we'll do that. We'll be right back. All right. I said, let's get out of here. <laughs> All right. Woo! 
All right, easy peasy. Check out this curve, man. Check it out. Check it out. Go low, Trooper T. Go low. <laughs> oh, you missed that. I wish y'all could see it in the mirror. Woo. Check out that motherfucker back there. Normally, I go up higher, but I couldn't because I didn't know how low he was going to go. <laughs> uh, let that door shut. Woo. Keep going straight ahead right up here. Go around that curve and all that good stuff. And uh, about a mile back up in there. Uh, maybe less is uh, where my cousin lives. Actually, two of my cousins and my uncle. <laughs> uh, my first cousin, Faith, she lives up there, and my second cousin, her son, uh, LB. Yeah, LB. That's right. <laughs> Him and his wife live, uh, live there. And they all live right there in close proximity on the same, I think the same property, pretty close to it. Uh, as uh, her daddy, his great daddy, my uncle, JB. <laughs> uncle JB, yeah. Uh, I don't know why that truck stopped. That, that dump truck, he's got the right away. I got the yield sign, not him. <laughs> I appreciate it, Mr. Dump Truck Man. Woo! Now, this is where I almost got in trouble the other night, man. <laughs> right before Christmas, I dropped my trailer over here, you know, picked up my empty and left. Well, you see, there was an 18-wheeler in front of me, right? He was dragging butt. I mean, he was dragging, man. So when I got right about here, I jumped over behind him. And then I had a little bit of an opening and I jumped over one more lane real fast so I could get on around him. And I look at my mirror and I see this car flying up behind me. And uh, so I punched it and got on by the guy. And when I got around him, I probably should have slowed down a little bit more than I did, you know. I didn't really slow down a whole lot. I kind of, you know, kept my speed up a little bit, you know, because I'd already gotten around him. I was trying to get out of the way of all the traffic coming up behind me. Well, I got over, and uh, I see I can see out the corner of my eye that car that I cut off. I say cut off. I broke his momentum. I say that. <laughs> I didn't cut him off. I just I got over, and he was flying, thinking he was going to fly by everybody. And uh, anyway, uh, so when I got back over, I could see out the corner of my eye the headlights coming up beside me. I'm like, I'm not looking over there because if I do, all he's going to be doing is flipping me the bird, you know, cussing me out. So uh, I just I just kept my head straight ahead, you know. And uh, I hear, uh, I hear, uh, whoa, whoa. And it was that. It was a state trooper. It was a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> is that what they call the Florida State Trooper Tootsie Rolls? Y'all the Tootsie Roll around? Uh, I look, <laughs> uh, he didn't say anything, he just did that little whoop whoop, and then he took off. <laughs> I was like, yes sir. <laughs> uh, so I dropped down to 70 on the nose, and uh, I wasn't going that fast, I was you know, a couple miles over the speed limit. I, I dropped down to 70, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, he took on off. And uh, at, at that point, other cars started flying up, and then they, I saw them taking off. I was like, y'all better be careful. Y'all would have blew up on him, not knowing who he is. But then it had the lights on top of his car, see? Uh, a lot of state troopers down here nowadays, they don't have those lights on top of the cars. They just got them in their, uh, across the front of the windshield or in their grill or something like that, you know? So, uh, yeah. Uh, I was nervous about that, but he, uh, he didn't give me that hard of a time. He just kind of did this little home thing and took on off. And, uh, but yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Woo. Yeah, we're going to get down here to the TA in Mariana and stop and get some uh, diesel. We're good on dips, so we don't have to worry about that. We can get us a little bit of diesel. 
does to make sure we got enough because uh, I'm doing the load today and I'm doing two tomorrow. So I go ahead and get the diesel today. I don't have to worry about it tomorrow. Now, I kind of got enough to go to Marianne and back, but I'd rather go ahead and get it now and not have to worry about it later. And because, um, you know, you never know when your fuel gauge may be a little off. So we're going to take a chance with the fuel gauge being off. I'll just go ahead and uh, stop this diesel. And uh, that way we know we'll be good. What's in the Chipotle River? Yeah. You go far enough up river, you go right by my mom's house. There's on the Chipotle River. Ooh. Yeah. by doing these little shorties like that because you're driving right by your house. Damn, what is this oversized? You got a big old thing on that. You built, don't you? All right, let's get on over. Get over, get over, get over, get over. All right. Yeah, uh, we're going to get it tonight. That way we get home. Drop the trailer bobtail over to the house. Take a shower, get some dinner with the missus, and uh, get a good night's sleep. Yeah, I'm on bed. And I'm going to double check with the uh, shipper when I go over there, give him the pickup numbers for tomorrow, and ask him, what time do you want me over here to check in? Because you didn't get me loaded this morning, man, after 9.30, I think it was, before I got loaded. So, yeah, if it's going to be 9.30, there's no sense in me getting up at 4.30 in the morning just so I can be here by, uh, be over there by, uh, 7, you know. If I have to get up, face my coffee, all that stuff, and then, uh, head over there. Ooh, I don't know what that is. All right. Is that an order? No, it looks like it's working. All right. All right. We're going to get this diesel. We'll be right back. All right. Got a fuel full of that. Went outside. Got us a cup of ice. I normally make my own ice in the truck, but I have not used my ice maker since before Christmas. So I didn't think to take it out in the truck and dry it out real good so it was nice and clean when I put it back in. So the water that's in there has been in there for a couple of weeks, almost dead right at a couple of weeks. So. <laughs> so I'm going to hold off on using that water for ice and pour it out when I get home this afternoon or tonight. And uh, I'll clean it out real good and uh, put some fresh water in. and. Uh, We'll have ice tomorrow. But we get I get free cups of ice or coffee or soda or whatever, you know, whatever it is I want, you know, fountain drinks or you know, whatever. It's all free because I have so many um the uh the free drink coupons because whenever you buy at least fifty uh, at least seventy five gallons you get a uh, Get a free drink coupon. So, uh, whew, come on, feller. Please get out in the middle. <laughs> Let me get by. Thank you. Um, get a free drink coupon. So, uh, I probably got a dozen of them. They might have took some back by now, though. I don't know. But um, I haven't really checked. But, uh, yeah, so that's great. I go ahead and get a free cup of ice. It's for my ice 
ball. And that'll probably do me. I'll uh I'll probably make it home. Uh, yeah, we got let's see, two hours there, two hours back, and then about an hour back to the house. So, eh, we got about five hours of driving left today. And we still got a mug of coffee left. So, yeah, there's that. So, I'm laying a star runner. Uh, yeah, so we still got coffee. We got ice water. We're good. We got to boogity, 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 and get back over there to uh, Lee Park. Go to the Nestle water plant, not the Nestle crunch bar plant. I'd much rather go. Oh, not really. I'm mean, the Nestle water. Not, I actually drank that Nestle water. Not in the little bottles. Let's see, I use these size bottles because I love the hand grip and the back back here where you can grip it. And Nestle does the same exact bottle in water. And uh, actually, that one's in the cool. They also do the ones with the squatted down top and bottom top thing, so that it's like level. I don't like those as much because it looks like a drum or cylinder or something. And it's harder to pour. I like that one with the pour it. But they all have that built in molded hand grip. I love that. It makes it so much easier. And the plastic is thicker, so you can reuse the jugs, which I do. And uh, if they rub over, like, like I, I said, I'll put about at least 10, maybe 12 gallons of water over on the floor in the floorboard. And, uh, you know, they rub around and stuff, move around. Well, if you get a little thin, cheap jug, Walmart water or whatever, grocery store water jugs, the little gap belt jug does, those are paper thin, thin. They're not designed to be reused.
Your wings were ready, but our hearts weren't. And that's not to say. <laughs> I'm not trying to say my uncle was an angel. By no stretch of imagination. But he wasn't a bad person either. He, uh, he helped me tremendously. He would help anybody who could. He was a good person. Uh, 
drug country store. So they get loads of bread and stuff, and they have bread racks, right? Well, he'd take the bread rack, tie a rope inside of the bread rack, wrap it, and loop it around my neck so I'm holding the bread, uh, bread rack, uh, rack uh, and the rope in my hands and everything would help hold it in place. And uh, we would go over to Dothan, Alabama. We were living in Donaldsonville, Georgia at the time. It's about a 35, 40 minute drive, so I had to get over there. So we drive over there, and there's lots of doctor's offices. And uh, there's therapy, and I mean, there's so many kind of offices. Don't do that, not just doctor's offices, all kind of offices. So uh, we would go to those offices, primarily the doctor's offices and stuff. And we would, he'd send me in, right? He'd say, all right, but tell him this right here is $2, this here is a dollar, this is $5, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, I had all that memorized. And um, so I'd go in, you know, big smile on my face and stuff, and I'm toting these tables. And uh, they couldn't resist. You got this big chubby boy here toting these tomatoes. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, when he's that clothes, probably has to close on it. Oh, it's a sight, man. Anyway, <laughs> I'd be so embarrassed now to see a picture of that if I had one. But, uh, Oh, that's a pretty classic. 84 inch block, too. Oh, nice. I don't know if y'all saw it in the, if you looked in the top left, you can go back to the screen and see it. But, um, yeah, I would, uh, I'd go in there and, um, you know, sell the tomatoes. And when I come back out, man, that, because you could put, I could carry probably at least maybe six, eight of those. Uh, on there, maybe nine at the most, on that rack, you know, and I'd come out and every one of them be sold. I'd have a handful of money. <laughs> and he'd just be grinning, you know, he worries every time, you know. And uh, now some people are going to say, oh, your uncle exploited you. No, he taught me how to hustle. <laughs> I, was, I was still in grade school when he started teaching me to hustle. You have, and, and that's the way it is, man. That's like you put your put your prettiest tomatoes on top, right? You're not gonna put the ugliest tomatoes you have on top. You got a little scar on the tomato, you know, or something like that. You put that on the top, man. That's your face. It goes on the bottom. Oh, but look at the floor. So I'm saying, oh, man. So that's what he was doing. He put what would sell out there. Five years old. 
what I would have done without her. I would have been so much smarter. would have been, I don't know, would have been really hard. And uh, she, she was my rock the whole way. You know, whatever I wanted to do, whatever I needed to do, she was, hey, let's do it. Whatever we need to do, you know. And uh, my cousin, the same way, and they worked really hard. It's her dad. Because it asked me to do it, and I was 
like, wow, that's, you know, I'm so glad you did that because I wanted to do it. I wanted to get my feelings out. I wanted to talk about it. I wanted to tell how he helped me in my life and get through everything that I've had to get through. Um, I mean, when I was 600 pounds, man, he was there trying to help me. You know, after I lost the weight, he was there trying to help me. And he was always there for me when I needed him. Uh, you know, I'll say that. There was times where we didn't talk for a few months when he was, you know, in Mexico or he was doing what he was doing, you know. And don't get me wrong, it ain't like we talk on the phone every day or we were talking to him all the time for, for the last 40 years. I mean, of course, there were times where we would go stretches without seeing each other. But, I mean, when we did see each other, we did talk. It was like it was just yesterday and last time. So we, we had that bond, but um, you know, it really helped me. You know, I sat down and I made. I didn't write a speech. I wasn't going to give a speech. I wanted to talk with my heart. I wanted to say, you know, what I wanted to say about my own. And I didn't want it to be a script that I read, but I did want to stay on the point of what I wanted. So I made notes to try to keep me on pace, keep me on track. Because you know me, I start rambling. Um, so to try to help me stay on, on track, you know, so I had the notes and everything. But when we got there for the funeral, the uh, man that owned the funeral home, he put me to the side and he said, uh, what are you going to do?
Stay safe. 